We're back for another Indomitus datasheet review, where today we're looking at that spindly canoptic reanimator. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where we've been looking at the new 9th edition rules as they've been coming out over the last few days. We've already seen a fair bit previewed for this Canoptet Reanimator's rules, but now we have a full datasheet and a reliably rumoured though not confirmed points cost, so let's take a look at what we've got. So here we have the Canoptic Reanimator. It's a 5 power level Canoptic creation with a rumoured points cost of 110 points, which would fit with that very much. In the bit of background text that accompanies the unit, it says they precisely pick their way across the broken battlefields. Call to service to repair the damage created by their enemy's artifice, atomizing matter with their nanoscarab particle beams, and transfiguring the raw material to repair the fallen necrons. So very much as we suspected, a repair and support mechanism. In the unit you get one canoptic reanimator at the moment, which appears to be an elite's choice for Codex Necrons interestingly enough, and there's no option to take additional reanimators in the same unit, at least as of yet. For your 110 points or 5 power level, you get a movement 8, weapon skill and ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength and toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 10 and a 3 plus save. Overall not too dissimilar from a Canoptic Spider in terms of durability, but this one is toughness 5 rather than 6, which is a slight downgrade against some weapons. It of course has a standard living metal special rule, which at the moment allows it to regain one lost wound per turn, and in terms of war gear is equipped with two atomizer beams and a elongated claws. Those atomizer beams will be striking at 12 inch range, they're assault 3 with strength 6, AP minus 2 and damage 1, so on average you'll be hitting with 3 of those, which translates into around about 1 dead intercessor per shooting phase, or maybe around 2 or 3 guardsmen. Not bad, but not enormous in terms of an offensive damage output unit, it's really not going to be all that much used against tanks. Its combat phase is pretty underwhelming as well, it is worse than the Canoptic Spider in that regard, as the Spider's Automaton Claws will have a damage of D3. Like all the other Canoptic creations, this one doesn't have Quantum Shielding I'm afraid, which is a shame, I don't think it would have been too overpowered on this, particularly at Toughness 5 with 6 wounds, it's at least fairly vulnerable to anti inventory fire. Basically the reason to include this in your army would be to get access to that Nano Scarab Reanimation Beam. We have already seen this previewed by Warhammer Community. Basically, in your command phase, you can select one friendly dynasty unit within 9 inches of this model, and when you do, that unit will get plus 1 to its reanimation protocol rolls, so we'll be able to get back up from the dead just that little bit easier. Theoretically, if stats with a crypt tech, then at the moment you'd be able to get back models on a 3+. Though to be honest, as it stands, as the rules are written at the moment, I feel like crypt techs are just quite a lot more useful than this guy. Unless the new Necron Codex changes them in any way, then they can buff multiple units within 3 inches, so it makes them quite a lot more powerful for this role. They can also remain protected by character protection, whereas this thing can't, and they can also provide a few other useful abilities. This guy's close combat stats just really aren't the most overwhelming things in the world to write home about. At the moment, I'm just not massively impressed with it on a datasheet point of view, although it has been mentioned at least once that they're planning to rework reanimation protocols in some way. Depending on exactly what it's changed to, whether or not it's a subtle tweak or a complete redesign, this could potentially make the reanimator really worth it, or mean that it's just not going to be taken in any sort of competitive list. Just flatly outcompeted by Cryptex. Sure, being able to reanimate on a 3 plus is kind of good, but Necron's main problem is they usually tend to have their units wiped out and not able to reanimate in the first place. If they somehow manage to find a fix to make it more usable, then it could well give this thing a better place than the army. Obviously, we'll, we'll have to wait to see the full rules of the Necron Codex to see any sort of synergies that we can get with this guy, see if those rumoured points are indeed correct, and even if he is as underwhelming as he looks at the moment, then there's no reason to think that in future chapter approves he might not be fixed and go down a bit. He's certainly a very cool looking model, and no mistake, and I'm sure he's a model that a lot of people will gain access to, as he is one of the ones included in the Indomitus box. So let me know your thoughts on the guy down in the comments below, is there anything else I'm missing, or have I judged him a bit too harshly? If you've enjoyed the review, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics for more similar datasheet reviews in the future. I'll be hoping to cover the rest of the Indomitus box models in time. If you're enjoying the videos, I'd just like to quickly mention the channel's Patreon page, which is how I have enough time to make all of these review videos. If you are enjoying, then any support is greatly appreciated. Patreons receive numerous benefits, including entry to the Allspets Tactics prize draw each month, where next month we'll be giving away three copies of the Indomitus box. Patrons get entered automatically, and you can also enter on the Facebook page if you're interested in that. If you're interested in the Patreon page, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.